In today's video, we'll break down the creative ways that writers and directors set the stage for a story and hook their audience. And it all starts with the opening scene. The first scene is the most valuable real estate a film has to offer. Congratulations! You got yourself caught! Sir? Now what's the next step of your master plan? Crashing this plane! It should immediately hook the audience. Perhaps the most obvious example of how to hook an audience, well... Calm down, Doctor! Now's not the time for fear! ...is to start with a bang. That comes later! Commonly used in the blockbuster action flick, the opening action sequence is meant to grab you. And sometimes has very little to do with the actual plot. Like in this opening from The Dark Knight. It might not move the story in a big way. Where's the alarm guy? The boss told me when the guy was done, I should take him out. <laughs> One less share, right? Funny, he told me something similar. <laughs> no, no! But in five pages, we have a dynamic action sequence and a truly memorable introduction to our villain. I believe whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you... Stranger. Skyfall, on the other hand, focuses on the hero. And it does so with a 10 minute chase sequence. Again, it's a white knuckle sequence that grabs you with spectacle. I may have a shot. It's not clean. Until our hero falls. Take the shot. Take the bloody shot. And while we're sure Bond isn't dead... 007 reporting for duty. M giving the order informs Bond's character for the rest of the story. What was it you said? Take the bloody shot. I made a judgment call. You should have trusted me to finish the job. This type of opening raises the stakes, introduces characters and key plot points while making sure the audience is along for the ride. Moving on. What I love about Nicole. This opening to Marriage Story and its home video aesthetic tells us so much about the characters. Call him. I'm not calling. She call always him. knows the right thing to do when it comes call to difficult know. family shit. Call him. I get stuck in my ways and she knows when to push me and when to leave me alone. We immediately know who these people are because we know what they care about. What I love about Charlie. Charlie is undaunted. He never lets other people's opinions or any setbacks keep him from what he wants to do. In eight and a half pages, we get a crash course in Charlie and Nicole's marriage. Their relationship, it's pitfalls. She is a mother who plays, really plays, never says it's too much. And it must be too much some of the time. He disappears into his own world. Shh. What's so your stop? He and Henry are alike in that way. Let's stop right there. But on page nine. Who wants to start? We find out that it is failing. I'm, I'm not gonna read this out loud. As we mediate 
your separation and eventual divorce, things can get quite contentious. Without this hyper-focused introduction, our sympathy for this couple would be lacking and their demise less tragic. Uncut Gems, however. I'm a block away. Where the fuck are you, man? A movie about wheeling and dealing in New York. I'm not a fucking athlete. This is my fucking way. This is how I win. All right? Opens with an excavation scene in Ethiopia. But why? Because the movie revolves around the mysterious effects of this gem, Why has it got so many colors in it, man? What is this? That's the thing. They say you can see the whole universe in Opal. That's how fucking old they are. Holy shit. I've been no. telling you. We need to understand its fascination, the hope it represents. The stone are really connected with this, man. I feel like I'm going to have 40 or 50 on this, man. Hey, uh, Eat that. That's that. Uh, what? Like you understand that? that? And the violence that follows it. You're being so thick headed. I'm not. Oh, my God. How one man's gain KG having fun. is another's loss. The foundation laid in these opening moments impacts the way we view the gem, the characters, and the power it holds over them. Feel it, feel it, feel it. Feel it. Come on, he's got the gem. He's got the gem. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. <laughs> Now, let's look at opening scenes that forego plot and characters and aim straight for tone. Let's look at this scene from La La Land. Summer Sunday nights, we sink into our seats right as they dimmed out all the lights. The power of the crowd, the lyrics, the excitement, the vibrant outfits, And then, we are suddenly thrown back into reality, the daily grind of LA. And only then, introduced to our two leads. Sanity. Ah! A half page of script and a four minute sequence later, the juxtaposition of fantasy and reality we would normally expect from a musical is established. La La Land strikes a single, consistent note. In contrast, Get Out blends horror, comedy, I got hypnotized last night. Bruh, I don't care if the bitches are Yana Van Zandt, okay? She can't fix my mother life. You ain't getting in my head. And social commentary. Why oh, yes. huh. Why black people? The tone established in the opening scene prepares us for this hybrid genre. What we see reminds us of countless horror films, an isolated character walking through a dark neighborhood. Creepy, confusing as suburb. <laughs> Oh, so serious though. I feel like a sore thumb out here. Andre jokes about the situation, right, which lightens the mood. Talk to you soon. His assault places us firmly back into a thriller. Bro, this is... Yo! Yo! But then the soundtrack rises in the mix. We hear a pop standard from the 40s with rather ominous lyrics, given the context. In the original script, the driver was described as listening to a French language tutorial, but the effect is the same. In four and a half pages, 
The mix of comedy and horror is the perfect setup for a story that crosses genre and prepares us for a complicated and multi-layered message. Good to see another brother around here. Ah, yes, of course it is. Sink into the floor. Wait, 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 wait. Sink. Whether it be a whimsical music piece or a high-octane action scene, you really can do anything in your opening scene. You can use flashbacks. It began with the forging of the great rings. Three were given to the elves, immortal, wisest and fairest of all beings. Flash forwards. Uma fotografia podia mudar minha vida, mas na cidade de Deus, se correr o bicho pega e se ficar o bicho come. E sempre foi assim, desde que eu era criança. Dreams. I'm sorry, did someone say my name? Metaphors. Okay. Oh, you do this. I'm going to go. 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 I'm going Red herrings. It didn't make sense that I'd be there. I mean, these guys were hardcore hijackers. But there I was. Besides, it was fun. I got to make like I was notorious. All right, you all know the drill. Give me the fucking keys, you fucking sucker motherfucker! Knock it off, get back. Number three, step forward. <laughs> How many keys, you c saga? In English, please. How many fing keys, you c saga? What the fuck? Hand me the keys, you fing sucker. Or MacGuffins. The rabbit's foot, where is it? I gave it to you. Ethan. Where's the rabbit's foot? Wait. What, what are you saying? That wasn't it? What I gave I'm you? I'm going to count to ten. You're going to tell me where the rabbit's foot is. Or she dies. I know where the rabbit's foot is. I can help you. What are some of your favorite opening scenes and sequences? And why? Tell us in the comments below. For more examples of iconic opening scenes... You know what this is? It's the world's smallest violin playing just for the waitresses. Head over to the Studio Binder blog. We rank the best opening scenes of all time. I need you to step out of the car, sir. So the next time you dust off your typewriter... How to start. Just remember, a great opening scene can be more than simply scene one. Hi, babe. It is an opportunity to do something truly great. Whatever you choose, make it count. Remember to subscribe and click the bell to stay in the loop with more filmmaking videos like this. We'll see you in the next one.